Hello, hello, and welcome to Lawrence Plays, where it's time for another update with uh, Factorio and Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. So we're going to start off in the basically the bottom left of the uh, of the space station and work our way outwards from the today and see what see what's what's been going on around here. So the first thing I want to talk about is that I've massively we, we discovered we weren't making these memory cards fast enough, and that was actually to, to an extent that was kind of my fault, and we'll talk about why in a moment. Um, but we had we had this trickle trickle coming out the bottom here and going into these warehouses, and as you can see, the trains just le left with some. So we've we're making a, making them at a reasonable rate at the moment. They're being they're being churned out. That's sort of okay. It's not amazing, but it's not too bad. They're also coming back round from science to be uh, to be recycled over here, which helps a lot because I suspect there's probably about as many coming down this belt as there are coming up this belt. So a good number of them are coming from there, and that 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 definitely helps a lot. But we still weren't creating enough. So, in order to allow us to make a few more, I built another an, another bank of machines to do it. So we've gone from having one bank of machines doing the polishing of the raw data substrates, uh, so rough data substrates over here. That's that's this bit here to then having a second lot of them over here which is basically exactly the same copy and paste and then down here we've got again the machines that are making the actual data cards out of them so, so that's fairly straightforward I thought so I copied and pasted it along and we were the, the rate these cards were coming in we was actually just about okay we, we were we had uh, about half a belt being used up here because you can see that down here we have half a belt flowing onto the onto well this belt here and half a belt of red circuits flowing in so between them that's enough to keep these machines happy because they um, that's the wrong machine. These machines happy. Uh, they take in okay. They take in four four sub data storage substrates and three advanced circuits. But basically, they're taking in most. There's a belt of each. There's half a belt of each going in, and we're we're turning all of those data substrates substrates into into memory cards that are being passed off down here. Great. So this this process is a one to one. You take in one rough data substrate to get one polished substrate and sometimes some scrap. And so we've got this belt flowing along here. And we, so I reckon okay, if we're doing doing about half a belt coming out here. Then that means for a whole belt coming in, there's going to be easily be room to do a second lot of them over here. So that was that was absolutely fine. The problem we ran, potentially ran into here was that it also takes six copper plates to make this, and we're having massive problems with getting copper plates down here because this this belt, the belt of copper plates that was coming down from the top, was not capable of keeping up with the demands put on it by by these machines here, and also by all the thermofluid production that's being done here. So you can kind of see if you look closely what, what how I solved this. Basically, what I did instead of having copper plates coming out from here, we've now got copper ingots coming out from here. So instead of the, using the, this machine over here to turn the, the ingots into plates, dump them into here, and then pass them down the bus, uh, I'm now instead just taking the ingots straight out of here and bringing them down, and then chopping them up on site. So that means down here for the uh, for, for the thermofluid, we've got we've got an assembly machine that's that's chopping up them I mean, into into the into plates, which is then going out both ways. And that was easily and that one um, assembly machine was easily enough this which is a good thing because there wasn't really room to put a uh, um, to put a manufacturer in here so I'm, I'm glad this is fast enough I haven't even needed to speed module it and we now have more thermofluid than we know what to do with so that's that's that's, that's really good then down here I've got two manufacturers doing the uh, chopping up the um, the plates and as we can see this is it it's more than fast enough we, we pr I probably I may maybe I didn't need two of them maybe I could have done with one and some speed modules or maybe just one on its own who knows but it's running quite happily as you can see we're very gradually pulling in the uh, the ingots along here because that because every single time we cut up one ingot we get ten plates out of it so this is really really dense we've got ten times as much copper coming down this belt as before so that's worked really well we've now got all the copper we can possibly eat and that's now allowed and, and that has now allowed me to then double the num double the quantity of uh, the memory cards we're producing and that's working really quite well beforehand we did have a full half belt of memory cards along here um, now we seem to have slightly less than that and, and and slightly less than a half half, half a belt along here as well. So it's, it's I'm not quite sure why there's slightly less. Maybe there's I I, I don't know, but I'm not going to worry about it too much because it is almost twice as fast, and that seems to be about enough for the factory as it as it stands at the moment. Especially with some of the changes that I'll talk about in a moment for some mistakes I've made. We did have a slight problem with this, however, and that was that all of these machines running away merrily like this was producing uh, contaminated cosmic water faster than we were able to deal with it. So this pipe filled up, and, and this pipe, because it's basically going to the same place. And we've got a pump up here that's trying to get rid of it as quickly as possible. So we've got this pipe here, and we've got this. This one is still full. We are still trying to. We are dealing with the over, over overflow of it, but we're uh, we're still trying to get rid of some of it. So that's why this this pipe is completely full, running up here, up here, up, 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 up all the way up here. And so in order to deal with that, I put in, I think, an extra three, maybe an extra, maybe only an extra two, but some added, added in, in some extra decontamination facilities up here. And these were relatively straightforward to add in. Um, it was just to copy-paste and then worry about all the pipe work and make sure all of that matches up properly. Um, 
and it's it's fairly straightforward. The only complication that I need to be careful of is that up here on the top there is an output for contaminated bio sludge as well as contaminated cosmic water. Now the contaminated bio sludge is actually being taken out the bottom with these pipes, which are easy to copy and paste because they're the same every single time, and it's passed over to this one machine down here. That despite the, despite having all of the everything else that's producing contaminated bio sludge, this one machine is is, is more than capable of keeping up with it. So that's great. But um, yes, we had. Uh, I had to worry a little bit about the pipes along here because these aren't exactly the same width. Here I've got the machines packed in every uh, no, two and then a gap and then two and then a gap. Here we've got one and a double gap, one and a double gap. So there's the, they they don't they don't um, let's use the word tessellate because it's not quite it's not quite the right word, but it'll do. Uh, they don't fit together quite as nicely as, as I would ideally have liked, but. It, it does it does kind of work it just means I need to be a little bit careful along here and at some point I'm probably going to paste one of these in um, and it's going to end up like that and we're going to go oh okay that's not going to work we're going to have to move across a little bit but generally as long as I'm a little bit careful putting them in it, it works pretty well and at the moment we seem to have enough mach probably have enough machines um, I, I, yeah the, the fact that this pipe is completely full is a little bit of a concern but as long as this pipe down here is gradually emptying and it's, I don't know, it's lingering in the, the low 20s. I'll have to have a bit more of a look at it in the next stream. But as long as we, as long as we, we are sort of gradually keep, gradually um, getting ahead of, get, get dealing with this, de dealing with this stuff, then we should be okay. This pipe will eventually start to empty a bit, and we'll, uh, we'll have a sensible point where it can just keep up. As part of the general expansion down here, Tristan has also increased the amount of um, beltage going from the contaminated scrap cleaning along here. So this is where we take in the contaminated scrap, wash it with cosmic water, and then pass it back out as, um, as, as normal scrap. Because apparently the one belt that was coming along here before and going up here wasn't enough. So we squeezed in the second one along the outside here. And these both feed in at the top and go onto the, onto the scrap disposal system. So my sus I, I have a strong suspicion that compared to um, Space Exploration 0.5, we are now producing quite a bit more contaminated scrap compared to the amount versus normal scrap. So overall, we've got the same amount of scrap coming out, but a higher proportion of it is contaminated. We're also producing more scrap overall, but that's I think because the factory is running faster because there's more of us playing, so we can we can do we can do things a bit quicker. So we've got a crazy number of um, machines along here to recycle the scrap, but we need to make sure we uh, we deal with it appropriately. And, and, and at the moment, it seems to be absolutely fine. We have a warning system set up connected to these two um, chests over here. So if either of them gets to more than um, more than ten, then the alarm will go off, and we'll learn that and we'll know that we need to come over here and sort it out a bit and make sure that um, it's not it's not going to jam up. So out of here, we have the uh, we have the copper coming, all these copper plates coming. And previously, I was passing them all down to here, putting them into this landing pad, and then sending them off down here to be made into the um, into the thermofluid and, and and so on. But now, because I've switched over to to ingots here, I can't combine them back combine them back into ingots because that's not a thing. Uh, so instead, we're having to put all of those now into this station over here. So we have a train that's gradually filling up, and I think when it does fill up, it's going to be able to head off either to over here and drop it off for the energy science, or possibly go and drop it off for the uh, material science where, um, and to make into the material testing packs so we do we do have sinks for the copper so we should should be okay getting rid of this but it does mean that we yeah we no longer want to pass it all down 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 here we need to get rid of it another way but the system is there to set up set up to deal with that so that's okay Tristan says he's also had to increase the amount of iron ore and copper ore cooking up here so that's interesting so because we're now dealing with so much scrap that means a lot more iron ore and copper ore coming out from here and therefore a lot more of it needs to be dealt with along here so yeah, fair enough. I mean, I'm I'm uh, very happy with that being being dealt with appropriately. So we can now churn through that a bit more quickly and have a bit more iron and copper going off to the stations down here where we're desperately going to be desperately trying to get rid of it. But you know, it seems to be able to keep up with itself at the moment. So I think this is um this is, is also okay. And I think that's everything that's going on down in the recycling area at the moment. So let's uh, wander a little bit further north, see what Mark has been up to. So Mark has, in, in, in recent streams, has been off busy doing, getting an Immersite supply set up. Uh, so that's been, been distracting him for um, a, a good few weeks. But now he's come back and he started, he's, he's started making progress on the, um, on all, on the bioscience again. So he's got this massive array of stations up here that are going to be calling in for all kinds of um, random things. Now some of these are spares, but basically he's got huge amounts of, of, of stuff that's going to turn up by train eventually. All of that is then going to flow over to, over to here where he can then make he can make the uh, nutrient gels and the biomatter and so on all the way up here. Um, oh, this is a, a biological cleaning facility. Then he's making little pots of goo, genetic data, different pots of pots of biological goo, and then making bio samples with a different recipe. So there's a couple of different bio sample recipes along here. One is this one down here that you. Oh no, sorry. This is no. This is this is turning biomass into into bio sludge. I, t I, I take that back. So this is and then it's passed up here. Um, Let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the loop here. So we we have biomass being turned into bio sludge. We also have a bit of bio sludge being brought in by train occasionally. 
but then that's also brought down here where it's converted it into nutrient gel and the nutrient gel can then be converted into I, I, I don't know I don't know so we've got yeah we've got the bio sludge is made into nutrient gel then up here the nutrient gel is made into nutrient vats the vats are made into um, biocultures and then the cultures and some nutrient gel is turned back into the biomasses and some uh, and, and and some uh, contaminated sludge and contaminated cosmic water so those are set, taken away and cleaned so the idea is that essentially we're bringing we're turning here we are turning um, biomass into into bio sludge and then through this process all the way up here we're turning the bio sludge back into more biomasses and that is a net positive uh, loop so you get more biomass out each time it goes around or more bio sludge out each time it goes around depending on which way you look at it and so eventually if you leave this running for long enough you're going to have plenty of plenty of plenty of the of the biomass and you can then start using that to try and make uh, to try and make the science packs we also have a different sort of bio stuff what's it called? which you'd also call creep so we also have yeah this this stuff biomatter as so we have the bio mass which is not appearing here never mind we also have the biomatter which can be converted into uh, fertilizer apparently that's not what we're doing right now made into bio lab made in med pack yeah you can also make this into bio sludge so if you don't have enough bio sludge you can bootstrap it with the biomatter that you get from killing biters down on Norvis alternatively you can um, you can just make you, you you can get it kick-started by some some other method and I think you can turn other things into bio sludge as well so if we look at look at the bio sludge you can make it from biomatter you can make it from wood you can make it from fish you can make it from contaminated bio sludge and so on so there is a fair amount of bio, ma uh, bio sludge that's been made down here and has gone into this train, but I think we still haven't made an entire train full. Um, I have to admit, I'm not certain. 757 times, and that makes nine. That makes about a hundred. So that's about seven and a half thousand. And we've got yeah, okay. And there's a bit more coming in from the barrels. So yeah, that that sort of that kind of kind of fits. We're, we're making we're making the bio sludge. We're loading up this train. Currently, we haven't made enough for even a single train load. So uh, Mark has had to make it make it his own way um, by turning the biomatter from creepers into uh, in, into the bio sludge. But then eventually he'll be able to get that working. Once he's got enough of the of these bio sample things up here, he can then start feeding the excess off further north and start making them into actual science packs. And we can get bioscience. And getting bioscience will be really really useful because one of the most important things you get with bioscience is um, better better productivity modules and it'd be really really nice to have better productivity modules to put in the in the lab over here so to, uh, that uh, because that will make all of the rest of the science we do for the entire rest of the run significantly cheaper because we'll go from having a um, a plus 60 percent productivity boost to maybe a plus 80 percent or a plus 100 percent once we've got two levels of it done and so on so it's going to make it's going to it's going to lead to an enormous saving over there and while we're over here in the science area let's have a look at some of the trains actually there, there isn't yeah not not here let's go down 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 here and look at this train that's being loaded up so i made um i said earlier that i i'd caused a rather um a bit of an excess of um of, of memory cards to be used and that was because i th i came along here and i programmed these up at uh, um to stop loading the tray the, the warehouse when the warehouse had more than 3,000 when the warehouse got to 3,000 we've since lowered them and I say we uh, Tristan has since lowered these to 1,000 because I was thinking about loading an entire train up with these uh, with the with these uh, uh, catalogs so that would have been 1,000 to two, two and a half thousand would have fitted in a train uh, in each each side of the train um, that's ex excessive and we're now putting 500 of each one into into each side of the train so a thousand into the train so having 2,000 stored in here is more than enough and that means this can stop running and that means that these stages up here will stop pulling in memory cards because that was pulling in large numbers of memory cards and then just stockpiling them all in here so they weren't getting returned to be recycled they were just getting held on to and and, and it was this whole system was being a bit greedy so it makes sense to have these as a much lower supply and eventually after a few after the trains run back and forth a few times we'll we'll, work, we'll burn our way through all of these and it'll get, get bring us down to a sensible number and then uh, and then we'll have a lot more of the uh, the um the memory cards available I believe he's also done the same for the energy science and the material science, so we won't have. Uh, we, we, again, we'll have the, we'll ha we'll have a bit of a bit of sense over that with those systems, and, and we won't have quite such an excess of all of these ingredients. I haven't done any more expansion on the um, uh, on, on, on the on the astro uh, science area because the, in, in the last episode, one of the things I did do though was was fix the uh, the coal supply and get that running a bit more nicely. So and and the um, and the light oil supply. I'll t t touch on that in a, in, a, in a few minutes. And that means we now have as many as many of these things as we need. As you can see, it's still trickling through a little bit. The uh, the frames are still being used up down here for the Astro 2 production. But all of this seems to have ground to a halt um, because. Right, we have we because we now have enough of the all these input cards. We're a little bit short of this one still, so let's have a look at why that's that why that's short. So up here, we have a shortage of oh the astrometric data coming in. That's that's interesting. 
because that should that was one of the things I did tweak. Oh, that's that's a shortage of, of, of memory cards. So yeah, we need we need, we do still need more memory cards to to to, to filter filter through to here and just get everything working nicely. Um, but I did upgrade. No, I didn't. I did this. I did this last week. I upgraded this one to go from the the recipe that uses just these three data cards to using all five of them, and therefore produces more. So it's a little bit more efficient, but there still aren't enough. We've run out of them down here. This is all going to grind to a halt fairly soon. That's a shame. Um, you can see it's all disappearing in here. But in the meantime, I think if I can fix that, I will then be ready to put in a few more of these machines down here, so we can make the catalogs a bit quicker. So let's have a quick look. I'm, I'm curious now. How long does it take to make an Astro One catalog? It takes ten seconds, and I've got nine machines doing it. Down here it takes 20 seconds and I've got seven machines doing it. So I need to have a lot more of these machines if I want that to be able to keep up. I want probably want to bring that up to about 15 to 20 machines across here. And that means I'm going to need to boost the inputs of all of these things. But we'll see by how much. Because if we're looking at it at the moment we've only got a couple of these, mach these machines running. We've only got one of these, a couple of these and so on up here. So we are basically caught up. But we'll put in we'll put in the extra machine and the extra um, the extra research servers and then find out what seems to be suffering. That's because that's going to be a thing to do next time, I think. However, over here in the science area, I did come in and I bumped the um, the insight recipe. Where is where 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 are we, where are we doing insight? Here, I bumped the, switched this one over to be to doing the uh, the three input insight recipe, which I believe I talked about in the last video. So that means it's now a little bit more efficient. We're producing an extra third over what we were doing when we only had two, which is a boost of 50% over when we only had one. And you can see all of the uh, the blank data cards pouring out here, um, and these are the ones that are going down the uh, down the disposal belt to be recycled and put back into the tray. So that's where a lot of those come from. And then when we when we actually make science packs, what are we doing at the moment? We're doing advanced furnaces. Is that a material? That's a material science one. So the material science packs um, are being created down here, and as you can see, these are also kicking out quite a lot of the um, quite a lot of the blank data cards. So all of those drop onto the onto the disposal belt to be taken away and recycled. And this whole system seems to be working quite nicely. While we're here, we can note that Tristan has also uh, copied and pasted in a, uh, a, a system for doing the, the biological science. So down here, we've got, we're making biological insights from um, biological catalogue one, uh, at least when, we, when, uh, when Mark makes some. Then those are going to be fed up here. We've got the, the machines over here ready to make bioscience one, and the rest are ready to be programmed up to do to do what we what we need up here we have these machines haven't been programmed yet this is just a copy and paste of what we had before so these ones are going to need um, vitamilange extract vitamilange extract is going to be slightly awkward because you can't send that around by delivery cannon but you can send um, the, the previous stage vitamilange roast or spice spice that one you can send the spice over and then we could then do the um, the recipe where we uh, where you purify it over here into more of the extract or what we what, what, what alternatively I think we'll probably do is that Mark has already brought a lot of vitamin and extract over in a rocket uh, so we've got a supply of it available so we'll probably hand feed it for now uh, manually dump some in by hand and then once we've got spaceships we can have a spaceship that brings it brings it all over and that'll make things uh, a lot easier because the, the biological stuff needs a lot of processing we don't really want to be doing that in space if we can possibly avoid it as part of setting all this up Tristan wants us to know he's also set up the um, the biological train over here so this is set up in exactly the same way all the other ones are we, this is for bio catalog one and two, then three, and then four. But at the moment, it's, it's, we're, it's only going to be bringing in the ones because we don't have any of the other ones. So yeah, that's great. And uh, these numbers are probably set reasonably sensibly. <laughs> uh, oh, that's not that's not set at all. The, these need programming. Okay, well we'll 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 pick that one up in the next uh, in the next stream. Finally, uh, carrying on over to the east, we, we come over to uh, to Mike's domain where he has been carrying on with the uh, with the material sciences. So you'll remember from ages ago, he's got the uh, material one data cards, one, two, three, four of them, making the material one uh, catalogs, and he seems to have run out of one of the things in there. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. Let's let's have a look at that right now. So he seems to have run out of the ingredients for these two things. So he's run out of okay, he's run out of material testing packs again. This seems this seems to be a running theme, and that seems to be because the Immer site isn't coming in quite as quickly as we would like it to. Now it is coming in at a steady rate, but it's just that steady rate isn't quite fast enough. So we do have the the cattle the uh, testing packs coming out. Um, the problem is a lot of them are getting taken up to be made into cold data or hot data, and so there aren't very many of them making it up here to be made into stretchy or squashy data. So it's going to take. Uh, this is probably going to be another thing that's going to struggle until we have until we have the uh, spaceships and can get much and can get significantly larger 
dumps of resources coming through. Yes, we could bring it in by rocket, but we're trying to avoid using rockets too much in this run, as I've, as, as I've um, explained a few times before. But yeah, it's, it's being dropped in basically as fast as it's being made over on um, uh, over on Taras, um, and then it gets dumped straight out into here, and we can and we can try and uh, try, try and then pass it over and convert it into the into these packs. So yeah, that's meaning this this whole system is running a bit slowly because yes, we've got loads and loads of these two data packs, but we're rather short of the of the stretchy and the squashy ones. So then the next step was to make the girders and then start torturing the girders in various ways. So over here we are doing rigidity data, trying to bend them, uh, and that makes data packs. Um, but oh, is this? Oh, okay, this one, this, this one has stopped because it's made enough. It thinks it's made enough. Um, okay, it looks like we have yeah we have a jam along here because the scrap's not getting taken away. That's interesting. Somewhere along here, the scrap is not getting passed through. I bet one of these is backwards. Yes, this one is backwards. If we flip that round, suddenly all the scrap will start to flow through here. We get some of the rigidity data coming out, and then everything else starts to flow through merrily. So we do have a way of taking out the um, the girders and recycling them. They are being brought down here like this and being passed back into the into the system down here. So that 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 works nicely. But if you don't take the scrap away, then uh, then then nothing will work. <laughs> So that's some rigidity data being made again. Uh, then we're making over here. We're making fluid tanks in order to put them into these machines, which are producing pressure containment data. So we're bringing in a tank, filling it up to capacity, and then some, and seeing when it breaks. And that gives us this pressure containment data. Get data cards that flow out along here. That one seems to be working nicely. I don't need to go in and fix anything there. We seem to have plenty of those. Uh, more pressure containment. Then up here we've got the uh, corrosion res resistance data. So we've, we've got some glass and we're putting chemical gel on it to see what happens. Or maybe maybe we're putting it onto the material testing packs. Who knows? But that produces some stuff that comes out of here. Um, he seems to have overfilled his cosmic water co disposal system here. So this one I talked about before. This is the one that feeds all the way down to, down over here and puts it into barrels in order to take it away. But it's not been hooked up yet, so the pipe has filled up and, and the system has stopped. Um, but it's it's as proof of concept as, as proof of concept go, it's worked a few times. So the the basic idea is is okay. Then we have the infamous train data. This is where you try and build a locomotive, um, and at the moment he's bringing all of that in by um, he's bringing the motors and the circuits in by. Uh, logistics bot which is very very naughty we don't approve of that um, but I as long as he removes that once we get slightly better logistics systems I suppose I, I'm not going to complain too much well I probably am I'm certainly going to complain a bit then up here we can create we can do we can do the train crash data where you ram a train into a girder and get loads and loads of data out so you get uh, you get 25 data out but you also get 1500 scrap and that scrap appears to have clogged up again here so maybe is this another one where he's got the got a belt the wrong way around uh, no, no, it's because he's got enough train crash data already going along here. Um, and then all of those, as, as, as you're basically used to now, will get fed up into these um, into, into these research servers. And then we can, and we can start making the uh, material testing catalog twos. So that's great. We are making material testing catalog twos. He's, and he started thinking about uh, about number three as well uh, up here. So the twos are then fed out down here in the same way that the ones would have been down to the train. Where they can be loaded into the warehouse and then put into the into into the uh, into the wagons here and uh, re ready to be taken away to be for science to be done with them. So that's working quite nicely. It's um it's sort of a a gradual a gradual step by step process, especially when you discover you got one of your belts the wrong way around. Um oh those mach the, these machines up here are for starting to make the um the bearings. So the, the, there's where are they? There'll be an intermediate um there's a heavy bearing thing in here somewhere. No, there isn't. He hasn't. It hasn't been researched yet. So there will be another thing. So it's the next thing. So in the same way that you go from aeroframe pole to aeroframe scaffold, and you go from holmium cable to holmium solenoid to um, super to, to uh, processor of some sort, I think. You go from um, heavy girder to heavy bearing to bulkhead and so on. Uh, so there's various different levels you go through with each of the ingredients. So the, uh, Mike needs to unlock the second one for now before he can get on and, and and start doing the second science. But he's heading in the right direction, or third science rather. But he's heading in the right direction for that. And that neatly brings us up to date with what's been going on in uh, in Norbit. So let's have a now have a quick look down on Norvis. And this has been one of the we've had a big problem on um, actually this isn't so much a Norvis problem as a Talos problem. So over here on Talos, I've uh, been I've done a little bit of babysitting of the um, of, of the processes over here for making the beryllium. Uh, so it's it's all it's working nicely now. Um, I've sorted out that sand monstrosity that we had before. We've got all of the outputs uh, feeding onto this belt here that then flows into this chest, and then the out and then that chest then outputs onto these belts that go into the um, in, in, into the, in, into into uh, smelting the ingots up. So we've got we've got this being fed into yeah all the places where ingots are being made. So we've got basically we've got now we've got two belts, an input belt and an output belt, and also an overflow belt here. So if we ever get above 
what is it? Um, Eight thousand in the wet in, in the chest here. The excess will then be dumped out down down this belt down here, where it can then be brought down and, and shipped out as glass. Uh, so the sand goes into these into these furnaces, cooked into glass, and is shipped off to Norbus, as you just saw there. We can also send it off to um, the, the the Holmium planet as well if we want. The problem was on Norvis, we had at one point we had too much glass. This whole system filled up because we're not using glass up as fast as you, as we would expect to be. And so we've got. I, I ended up having to. So, so that meant this this uh, this this uh, storehouse filled up. This storehouse filled up, and then we had some in the delivery cannon chest here, which meant the delivery cannon stopped firing, which meant we didn't have. Which meant we overloaded on sand out on on Talos and probably other planets as well. So, in order to fix that, I put in this storehouse up here, which is then, so we're feeding the glass out from there into this one to give an extra buffer, and it can then pour out of here to go into this one and be passed out um, down here to go into these into these systems as, as and when required. And, and if you know, we've now got, we're now down to a mere 29,000, so this is slightly less than half full. So we clearly had a couple of train loads be taken away, and therefore we're, um, things are a bit more sensible. And over here, this one is obviously completely full because it's being fed from there. And these are set up to only load when there's less than 20,000 in here. So we'll have to use 30,000 30, out of here, another 30,000 out of here, and whatever's up here, another 10,000 from here. So we'll need to get through 70,000 glass before we'll even start taking it from up here again, which is a good thing. Um, and a train is, own, is, is less than 40,000. So that's, that's going to work quite nicely. We're going to keep, uh, keep the system all running off the, the glass that's brought in from other planets for the time being because we, we just need to get rid of it we, and um, and the hope is that we'll get we'll get through enough glass from making things like the um, the the rough data card substrates and eventually we will we'll start using it for making low density structures as well but we haven't done that yet um, ironically or awkwardly um, the other thing that uses sand over here is the is the silicon and we had a massive massive shortage of silicon and that was holding up the uh, the data storage sub substrate construction and so i managed to fix that by basically upgrading all of the belts around here to blue belts and then discovering that still wasn't quite enough and upgrading all of these to green belts so yes we've now unlocked green belts they require i think rare metals and imasite to make so we've now got we've got the stuff for making those not it we don't want to make them in huge quantities because imasite is still difficult to get hold of but for important things like this where there's something that just simply couldn't keep up using them tactically in relatively small quantities is fantastic it means we can we can get a bit more throughput from here we can get this to run a bit faster every, and, and it just makes it makes things work a bit more nicely we should probably go around and start upgrading all of the stations to using the green loaders as well that would be that'd be rather good because then then we can fill the trains up much more quickly these are capable of what 60 per second instead of the 45 per second with these or 30 per second with these ones so that yeah if, if we want to load trains up nice and quickly that would be quite good although down here of course we're using inserters because we built all of these stations before the factorio upgrade happened that allowed us to start using loaders with trains so you know um <laughs> we'll do we'll take what we can along Looking at this station, as well, you can see that Tristan has been uh, setting uh, train stations now to start to start fueling trains with rocket fuel rather than um, rather than uh, processed fuel. I the theory behind that was because we were very very short of coal, and that was what we were making uh, the processed fuel out of. So that seemed like a good idea at the time, um, but. Uh, it, it, but actually, it, in, on, on, in hindsight, we'd probably be better off making the processed fuel from the rocket fuel and then carrying on fueling the trains with uh, with um, with processed fuel. And we can note that down here, this has led to lots of trains running out of fuel. So we've got we, we, we have we have various tra trains which have no fuel, and therefore th there's some big problems here. We're going to need somebody to be on Norvis and to go out and, and fix all these trains up, I suspect. So this is rather unfortunate, especially as nobody's actually down there. He's also Tristan has also increased. Blimey, our factory's getting kind of big. Uh, he's also increased the number of uh, machines we have cleaning out filters, which I think he's done here. Yes, yeah, so we've got a lot more filters here, and we put and put, he's put, he's put speed modules in them as well because we weren't cleaning up these dirty filters quickly enough. So this was this was overflowing. Um, interestingly, the belt now seems to be completely full. I thought we had a, a limiter on this to to, to 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 leave some gaps on the belt so we didn't have quite as many on there. I suppose we have a little bit of limiting happening here by the use of um, use of some yellow belts, but still. Um, it's not quite what I was expecting, but I thought, I, yeah. Um, but we, yeah, as you can see, we've now that now means we've now, whilst we do have a supply, quite a few um, filters in the in the, in the, in the, in the, I've lost it, here, over here, in, in this chest waiting to be cleaned, in fact the chest is completely full, we are just about cleaning them as quickly as we're bringing them in, I think, um, yeah, so there's, that, that number seems, yeah, that number is going down very, very slowly, so we are now just, just about working through the backlog of filters, so, yeah, that's good, we'll, uh, we will get rid of them all and, and, um, and keep everything nice and clean. 
I mentioned that um, we'd had that we had a bit of a coal short, and that was what was causing my production of uh, frames for my telescopes to to die. So I put in a couple of extra coal mines, one up here, uh, which has a train in it, as you'd expect. It's, it's a, just it's just a mine with a load of filters around it. That's fairly quite straightforward. And then another one over here somewhere up up here. Yeah, there's a nice big patch of it up here. So again, another another coal mine. Dig up lots of coal very happily, shove it into a station that's ready to be taken away. I did that. Then we discovered it hadn't helped, and the problem was actually throughput. There weren't enough. Um, there weren't enough coal trains bringing coal from wherever it's been, wherever it is being dug up from over here, for example, and bringing it down to the plastic making area down here. And so this this was a, this had a shortage because there were insufficient trains bringing it over. Um, so actually, add, so I put in the extra coal mines. Great. I mean, they'll be useful in the future. But we also added in some trains, and now that now it seems, there seems to be enough of them, we're, we're able to bring the coal down here. And this this whole system down here seems to be happy. And as you saw up on in orbit, we have enough coal up there, and we've got enough plastic coming through as well. So this is this is all now working quite nicely. Um, I also oh yes, I also increased the light oil production. So over here, we the, this this row of machines wasn't wasn't keeping up with the uh, the light oil demand. Part Partly because we were um, uh, Tristan had, had, had pulled was pulling in through lots and lots of rocket fuel to now down to power trains and things, and also he'd, he'd redesigned the station, which meant emptying it and then refilling it. So there's a big surge of demand. Um, but also uh, just because I think it just wasn't capable of keeping up. Although that said, given that none of these machines are running now, maybe maybe I have, have over, overbuilt this a little bit. Because I came along here, I put in all of these beacons to make these machines run faster, and I put in an extra row of refineries down here. So we now have, we now seem to be massively, massively overspecced on that on that front. But never mind. I would rather have too much oil than not enough. Um, we'll probably need more in the future. So I think that's probably we'll we'll, we'll just call that future proofing, shall we? And uh, and uh, <laughs> leave it at that. We also had some weirdness over here with the lithium production. Uh, we're not still not quite sure what happened here, but it seems like um, the, there were, there, this, this was all set up a little bit weirdly. But the long and short of it was that because of the the amount of lithium, uh, sorry, the amount of chlorine in this uh, warehouse had got slightly below where it was supposed to be, and that had caused something to break, and so we'd stopped producing lithium. We're not 100% sure why. We, it might. I am wondering, actually, now I think about it again, whether it's because we're running th running the system a little bit harder because we're using more lithium uh, than, we, than we were before, and so more of it is tied up in the um, in, in this lithium sulfate or whatever the stuff is called that comes around here. Lithium chloride, rather. Uh, yeah, lithium chloride. Maybe more of the chlorine is tied up in lithium chloride on this belt and in these machines that hasn't yet been turned back into chlorine to be passed down here. Or maybe it's because there's a rounding error in the maths somewhere, and so. Every time this produces 1.0001 uh, chlorine, it gets rounded down to one. Or I don't know, but something funny was happening, and um, yeah, it, it, it ground to a halt. Uh, we've, I've come in and fixed it. Uh, we may need to chuck some more sand in here at some point to, to, to give it a bit of a bump. But at the moment, it's supposed to be the chlorine is supposed to be in a closed loop, so it goes. The chlorine gets turned into um, it, the chlorine gets combined with, with hydrogen into hi into hydrogen chloride, then with with mineral water into hi into lithium chloride. Uh, which then comes around here and is then turned into lithium and chlorine, uh, and the chlorine and the chlorine gets passed back round. And it's supposed to be, as I say, a clo closed loop that you use the same chlorine over and over and over again. You only need to bring in um, the 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 mineral water up here, and um, and we're pulling in oh, uh, nitrogen, and we're pulling in hydrogen out of the atmosphere down here. So that should be everything we need, and the chlorine, as I say, goes round and round and round. But it, it, it ground to a halt. So something went wrong there. Um, we'll we'll just have to keep keep an eye on it and make sure nothing, make make sure we don't have any problems here. So that brings you to the end of the first first video. I suspect I think I might have gone through a bit more than half of what's been going on today. So uh, tomorrow's video might be a little bit short. I apologise for that, but I hope you've enjoyed what we uh, seeing what we've been up to. Uh, we will of course be streaming again on Monday. They'll be um, uh, carrying on with fixing all the thi all the things I've been talking about today, and then seeing where we go from there. Back on Wednesday for some more XCOM, and uh, and then then there'll be more of these catch up videos on th on Friday and Saturday. Uh, I've also been doing quite well at releasing miscellaneous Factorio videos on Tuesday. Those differ depending on whether you're a channel supporter or not. If you're a supporter, you get to see the videos a week early. If you're not, then you have to wait to see them. Um, so yeah, make sure you check those out. There's always plenty happening on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.